What's up YouTube? This is Sam from Tyke Schooling and today we're going to talk about your tiny tiny structure that is your larynx. So before talking about the larynx, I must add up the respiratory tract and remove this muscular structure. I just added up the muscular structure in order to look at fancy, you know, uh, have a good view of it. So the larynx, you, know, you can find first before we start the lecture. I want you to have a good like at a good look at larynx so you can understand. Before even starting, I want to ask you something. If you have read the larynx and didn't understood it, so can you tell me what is this foramen or what is this opening and what structure pass through this opening? If you could answer that question, I might give you a gift. Just just kidding. I, I'm not going to give you any gift. All right, uh, just move forward. So remember the larynx, which is your voice bo box, is uh, is an organ which is located in front of your C3 to C6. If you see it in a better way, this is C3, like if you want to see it, C1. So this is C1, C2, C3. So this front of C3, C4, C5, and bit down there, C6. So this is your larynx. Before, uh, let me first uh, tell you the name of the structure that are visible in this diagram. So we would, it would be easy for us to discuss the larynx and uh, all the structure. So remember, this this video is just an introductory video. Uh, we'll make uh, another video because in this video we'll be talking about the uh, vascular nerve nerves and introduction, and we're also going to talk about a clinical that is related to your what we call the larynx. So this is your larynx. In front, if you see it from front, you can see this is your hyoid bone. This is it, your hyoid bone in, in green. This is your hyoid bone. And this structure just below the hyoid bone is your thyroid ligament, which is also called the median thyroid ligament. This is your thyroid cartilage below your thyroid median ligament. And below your thyroid cartilage is also another uh, median cricoid ligament which connects the uh, cricoid cartilage which is below and the thyroid cartilage which is above and below the cricoid cartilage we have another structure that is a final structure which is a cricotracheal ligament which connects a pre pre uh, like by its name it can tell you it connects the cricoid cartilage and the trachea so in, if in, if you see it from front side you can have it this way let me remove the uh, this structure first. All right, so now it's easy for us to see. All right, so if if you see it laterally, you can see this is your thyroid. This is your superior horn of your thyroid cartilage. This is your inferior horn. We'll be talking about the articulations in 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 further videos because we'll talk about the thyroid cartilage in detail. And inferior horn is kind of going to back and attaching to uh, in on the cricoid cartilage on the uh, on the uh, like on, on cricoid cartilage. And again, if you see it from posterior, this is your superior horn, this is your inferior horn, and this is your cricoid cartilage. So remember, the cricoid cartilage we'll be talking about again in future. So cricoid cartilage has its lamina on posterior side, and the thyroid cartilage has its lamina on anterior side. So you can see the cricoid cartilage lamina on posterior side, and the thyroid cartilage uh, lamina on anterior side. What is structure you can see on posterior side? Uh, and if you see the this big flap uh, or this big structure, which is called your uh, epiglottis. If you see the epiglottis from front view, you can see it this way. Well, if you see it from front, you can see it this way. This is your epiglottis. If you see, if you see, if you want to see it from backside, you can see it's a leaf-like structure. Um, this is your epiglottis, and just below the epiglottis, you you in, in future lecture you will know that epiglottis is attached to conjugated cartilage, which is again connected to your. Uh, arytenoid cartilage which is kind of a pyramid shape so again on the other side it is attached to it and epiglottis again goes downward and opens into your larynx and finally into and helps in uh, opening and closing larynx so can you can say trachea so i just wanted to, i just want you to see this picture and understand it so we can uh, discuss the larynx i might repeat a uh, few things that i've just told you so in order to make uh, everything clear so remember the larynx is located in the anterior component of your neck which is suspended from your hyoid bone very clear suspended from the hyoid bone and spanning between C3 and C6 it is continuous inferiorly with the trachea and opens uh, superiorly into your laryngeal part of pharynx 
and it is covered by anteriorly by the infrahyoid muscle we'll be talking about the muscle later on and two lateral lobes of your thyroid gland this is your lobes of thyroid glands the larynx is closely related to the major blood vessels which we talk talk about in just a bit about the blood vessels two important blood vessels that are supplying your larynx Posterior to your larynx, uh, we have got uh, the esophagus. For example, if I show you end of the respiratory tract, all right, let me, okay, I have removed the lungs and all that. So if we add up the, all right, let me add up the respiratory tract, okay. Okay, I can't have it because I want to add the tract here. So first, let me add up uh, the digestive system so you can see all right, so this is your, in front we have got, this is your esophagus posteriorly. Uh, in front of esophagus, you have got the trachea, right? This in here, you got the trachea. So it's uh, posteriorly, this, this um, big, uh, green, uh, big red color structure is your esophagus. So posterior to your larynx is your esophagus. Um, this is, uh, the, this area is, you can say, this is of clinical importance because during emergency intubation, uh, because during emergency intubation, which is uh, which means as pressure can be applied on this cricoid cartilage of the larynx to occlude the esophagus, we provide pressure from the front side and it can occlude the esophagus, and thus it prevents regurgitation, which means um, the uh, uh, passing back of. Uh, food or something back to your mouth which means regurgitation of gastric contents and this pressure we apply is also called cricoid pressure or salix maneuver all right you can call it salix maneuver or cricoid pressure which uh, we apply for for not having a regurgitation of the um, stomach contents if you talk about the anatomical structure, so remember the larynx is formed by your cartilages, your uh, cartilages, skeleton, which we'll be talking about, uh, which we will be talking in just another lecture maybe. Uh, so we have the laryngeal muscles, ligaments, we'll be talking about all the muscles, all the ligaments, all the cartilage and put them in one lecture. But here we are going to divide the larynx, uh, in this lecture we're going to divide the larynx into three parts. That is your supraglottis, your glottis and your subglottis. So remember your larynx divided into three parts, there is supraglottis, uh, glottis and you can call it infraglottis or subglottis. First talk about the supraglottis. I have this picture which we can... Uh, First, I think we should understand this picture. Then we are we should, we should go to the supraglottis, infraglottis, and subglottis. So first, you you want to see this picture. First, uh, you have to see this diagram. So what I did, let me remove the digestive system. So what I did, I took a cross section like this from the side. I cut cut it the like I cut it exactly this way from in front of the hyoid bone. Exactly cut it this way. So you are view and removed this part, and you are viewing it from the side from sides so from sides you can view it this way because you can see this is the body of hyoid bone and as well in this diagram you can see this is the body of hyoid bone so now you understand this is the body of hyoid bone and uh, if I remove this one hide and this was your uh, epiglottis and again this was your epiglottis all right so what is this this is your body this is your epiglottis again uh, and we talk about this structure. So what you have to do as you go down, your epiglottis is attached finally in front of your uh, the thyroid cartilage through a ligament, which is called epi, epi, epithyroid ligament, something like that. And behind exactly that, we have got the vestibular fold. It's a fold. It's a fold. And uh, again, uh, and and it's also called the false cord, uh, false vocal cord. And just below that co uh, vestibular fold, we all have, we have uh, another fold which is circular. Like if you if you see, it's circular this way because we have ha we had a cross section, so we cannot uh, have we cannot make a circular this one. But you have to understand there is a circular fold. So this is vocal fold, which is also called true vocal cord. And the space between this uh, vocal vestibular fold and uh, vocal cord is also called glottis. We'll be talking about that in a lecture. So uh, now you have to understand this is your cricoid cartilage down here. And on the above side of cricoid cartilage, we have arytenoid cartilage arytenoid cartilage and above the carotenoid cartilage we have the corniculate cartilage so these structures are 
like uh, combine or attached with each other so it's very easy to remember them cricoid cartilage arachnoid cartilage and cart carniculate cartilage this structure this will also help you understand our coming lectures and this is the cuneiform cartilage which is pretty down here and down as we go down there we have got the trachea tracheal cartilage and all that so we hope you got the structure now we'll talk about what well, now we we'll talk about the division of the larynx so uh, I'll use this diagram to make you understand the division of la larynx because I can I can make, make it easy even in this diagram so I explain you um, the division of larynx so first we'll talk about the supraglottis if you see this diagram so this area is supraglottis from this point till this point till uh, your uh, you can see vestibular folds or till this point this is your vestibular fold from up down there till your vestibular folds this is your supraglottis from inferior surface of the epiglottis to the vestibular folds is called supraglottis and from uh, and the glottis which is the second part or here it is written ventricle sinus of larynx so it's simple it's uh, between the two cords that's your vocal cord and it's one centimeter so it's the opening between vocal cord that is that is true and false vocal cords or you can see opening between your uh, what I say uh, uh, this false vocal cord and true vocal cords and again in the last we have the subglottis which is from inferior border of the glottis to the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage from here till down there all right so remember one thing uh, if, if, if this is of clinical importance you have to remember that the inferior surface of the larynx is uh, lined by pseudo stratified ciliated columnar cells and uh, there is an important exception to this uh, because the true vocal cords uh, which are lined by the stratified squamous epithelium so this is all about the structure of your larynx now we because uh, we will be we will be make another lecture on membrane the muscles and all that so that will be the part two of this larynx and this now we'll talk about the vasculature or you can say vascular supply or arterial supply so the arterial supply i don't have a diagram here i guess i had one so remember the arterial uh, this is a nervous supply but i'll be telling you the arterial supply so arterial supply is very simple is it is um uh, it is through the superior and inferior laryngeal nerve so you have to understand it this way the superior laryngeal artery which is a branch of your superior thyroid artery which is derived from your external carotid artery so it follows your internal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve so uh, this is your superior laryngeal nerve on on the side of the superior laryngeal nerve like on, it, with the vagus nerve like with the superior laryngeal nerve we have got uh, there is another structure which is called the superior uh, which is called uh, the superior thyroid artery moves with it and supplies the uh, the part of the uh, larynx from the upper side and the other branch is the inferior laryngeal artery which is a branch of your inferior thyroid artery which is derived from your thyro cervical trunk so remember inferior laryngeal artery derived from thyro cervical trunk and superior laryngeal artery which is derived from your external carotid artery and uh, the inferior laryngeal artery follows the recurrent laryngeal nerve so it follows from here it comes down here so mostly uh, sometimes it's also the inferior laryngeal artery also arises from the uh, thyro cervical trunk or directly from here and moves with the recurrent laryngeal artery with it and follows the inferior of the larynx when venous drainage is by the superior and inferior laryngeal veins which is very simple the superior laryngeal vein drains into the internal jugular vein via the superior thyroid whereas the inferior laryngeal vein drains to the left brachiocephalic vein via the inferior thyroid vein now we'll talk about the nerve innervation so the larynx is basically receives both motor and sensory innervation via the branches of your vagus nerve so the vagus nerve plays an important role here so we got two branches from the vagus nerve there is the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is the largest or i can say longest uh branch so the first branch which supplies the larynx is the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the second one is your superior like on the you can see it on the superior side that is your superior laryngeal nerve only two nerve supply all right so first let's talk about the superior laryngeal nerve which is simple one on the above side so the superior laryngeal nerve which is uh, the internal branch provides the innervation to the supraglottis and the external branch 
provides motor innervation to the cricoid muscle. So the, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which you can see, is a long, it's taking a long path. It provides sensory innervation to the infraglottis, which is the area I told you, just like three areas I just told you. Uh, the, it supplies the uh, infraglottis and motor innervation to the all the in, internal muscle of larynx except the cricothyroid because the cricothyroid muscle is supplied by the superior laryngeal nerve. So this is it regarding this uh, nerve supply of larynx. Uh, now let's have a clinical relevance. So in clinicals we talk about uh, the vocal cord paralysis. So the vocal cord paralysis or you can say the vocal cord are responsible for production of a speech. We all know that their movement is controlled by the intrinsic muscle of larynx, which we'll be talking about in future lectures. And the majority of the innervated, the majority of which are innervated by which nerve? Recurrent laryngeal nerve. Only muscle which is applied by the superior, uh, the superior laryngeal nerve is the cricothyroid. All are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And uh, due to Due to the long innervation of this left, it's left, all right, it's, uh, there's right and left. So this recurrent laryngeal nerve, due to its long course, the recurrent is susceptible uh, to damage, causes of RLN palsy, which is recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy. So uh, usually these include your, uh, what happens, what are the causes of RLN palsy? This is because of apical uh, lung cancer and your thyroid cancer, aortic uh, aneurysm because it passes through the aorta, cervical lymphonomy and uh, you can have the latrogenic which is particularly um, during the surgery due to close relationship with the inferior thyroid artery. So what happens in unilateral oral, oral pensy, one unilateral means only one uh, one recurrent, recurrent laryngeal nerve is damaged. In that case one vocal cord is paralyzed, the other vocal cord tends to compensate and speech is not affected to a great degree although the patient may experience a hoarseness of voice like blah, blah. Uh, in uh, cases of bilateral palsy both vocal cords are both vocal cords are par paralyzed in, um, in a position between abduction and adduction breathing is impaired also and phonation cannot occur uh, remember in situation where the nerves are only Partially damaged, the vocal folds become paralyzed in a fully abducted position. If this occurs bilaterally, the demoglottis, which is the which is the space between the vocal cords, the demoglottis. I, I I wish I had another diagram so I could show you. I don't have, and you can see the uh, demoglottis, which is the space between the vocal cords, is completely closed, and an emergency surgical innervation is required to restore your uh, what you call the airway so you can breathe in properly. So this is it regarding the introduction of your larynx. I hope you enjoy the lecture. If you did, make sure to answer this question that I ask you further on and let me let me know uh, should I make lecture on any other topic. If so, please let me know in comments and see you within a lecture and make sure to subscribe and keep visiting Tig's schooling. Oh, look, look, look.